What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Nicey Chunga Benny. I'm here with my co-host, Greg King. What's good, everybody? And you're listening to the Ball Fake Podcast. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode. It's now episode 21. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like and subscribe. Turn on post notifications. Leave something for us in the comment section, and we'll get right back to you guys. But if you're listening on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, make sure you give us a nice little review on there. We'll also get feedback on that platform as well. But um, as far as our video today, we're going to talk about LaMelo Ball versus Lonzo Ball's matchup last night. And before we start today's video, I want to give a quick shout out to our subscriber of the day. Shout out our boy, Matt Diesel. We appreciate you tuning in to every single episode and just showing a, us a whole bunch of a lot of love, man. But as for the video, I'm going to let Greg start off with his comments and concerns on the last night's matchup. And you take it away, Greg. All right. Um, starting off, just glad to see LaMelo and Lonzo play against each other. That was a great, great moment in NBA history. And um, hats off to LaVar for seeing seeing that through and hoping their helping their sons get to where they need to be which was the nba but starting off with lonzo i'm just very disappointed with his play recently just he didn't play good last night he only had five points two of eight shooting from the field one of seven from the three-point line had a plus and plus minus and negative seven and just really struggling and the thing about lonzo is sometimes he plays aggressive sometimes he doesn't and that really showed yesterday with him coming off pick and rolls, looking to pass and not looking to score. I mean, there was a couple of moments where he could have got off the screen and went straight to the hole and got a layup. But he was looking to pass and uh, he only had two two turnovers, but some stuff was just not there. And I just feel like he's just, he's not just letting the game come to him and not being aggressive. Like sometimes he can, he can be aggressive. The games that he played really well through these nine games, he played really aggressive. But he play aggressive for that one game and then go back to being the old Lonzo. I have to face the fact as a Lonzo fan that he won't go back to that UCLA Lonzo just because of how Stan Van Gundy is playing him. He's playing him with Eric Bledsoe and trying to make Lonzo a jump shooter. And um, it's not really working based off his percentages and how he's playing these through these nine games. And it's very disappointing to see. And I really do want to see Lonzo perform well and do well in the Pel with the Pelicans because I think they have a nice young core with him Brandon Ingram and Zion, but they have to figure out what they want to do with Lonzo on the offensive end. Right. And I think Melo and Lonzo, they're both impact players. You know, I think yeah. they're, they're both really good as far as like from the passing standpoint. I think LaMelo ball has the edge when it comes to that, just because, you know, he, he plays the game of basketball a lot more freely than, you know, what Lonzo does. But I'll give Lonzo the edge when it comes to, you know what I'm saying, the defensive end, just because he's got more of an NBA body. He's got a bigger build. He's able to contend, contain guys on the perimeter a lot better, get out and contest shots a lot better, and just be able to keep players out of the lane um, better than what LaMelo can do. But I think they both showcase the ability to make their teammates better. You know, uh, Melo, he did a great job last night getting his teammates involved, you know, uh, not only was he able to create his own shot, but he was able to create shots for everyone else around him. And he did a good job operating the offense last night. But I mean, as you can see, you know, he finished the game with nine assists. Uh, he was a little too passive for me at times. You know, this this was a problem um, for LaMelo coming into the NBA just because it's like with his ability to pass the ball so well, he kind of overdoes it sometimes and he tends yeah. to turn down a lot of wide open jump shots. So yeah, that happened a few times. I was like, bro, shoot the ball. Like he was open on three and he passed it to uh, somebody in the corner when he was wide open for a three like he did that a lot right but yeah i mean outside of that you know he he shot four of 12 from the field you know he grabbed 11 boards one assist shy of a triple double he actually would have been the youngest player in nba history to accomplish that had he you know what i'm saying was had he been successful doing that but i think the hornets offense it's a lot better when Melo's in the game you know just because He's pretty good operating in pick and roll situations. You know, he gets a lot of paint touches out of this, which collapses the defense, you know, and it opens up the floor for the rest of those shooters. Guys like Devontae Graham, even though he's been struggling, uh, Gordon Hayward and Terry Rozier, those are all three guys that are capable of knocking down shots, especially when they're open on the perimeter. So having Melo in the, um, running the show at the point guard position, that'll help them with that. But I think Melo, he does a better job of, you know, putting pressure on the defense because He's looking to score first versus Lonzo, who's more of a pass first That's point guard. Yeah, you you know, um, Lonzo, he doesn't he does a terrible job of really putting pressure on the defense. You know, it, it's something that he's always really struggled with since he's came into the league, just because it's like he doesn't look for a shot when penetrating, you know, which makes it a lot easier for the defense to contain him. Because, you know, if you're not going to be aggressive when you're out there on the floor, you tend to become a liability. So exactly. I think that's one thing that Lonzo needs to fix. But I mean, as far as last night's game, 
he didn't have much of an impact. You know, he he actually finished the game with five points, three assists, two rebounds, and I think he had one steal. This is this is a horrible stat line for somebody horrible. who's who's looking to you know what I'm saying make a big jump in in this league and you know get a big contract. But I mean. Like I said, he wasn't very aggressive. You know, this kind of affected the rest of the Pelicans offense and that kind of translated to the defensive end. But uh, I think Lonzo's mentality, that's probably his biggest, you know what I'm saying, knock on his entire game. It's the fact that the fact that he comes into games, you know, very nonchalant. He seems yeah. to check out a lot. Um, yeah. And when things are not going for him, he just, just gets lost in the game. I don't know why that happens so much. And it's very frustrating. Yeah, I, I mean, and he's, he's just very timid and very monotone. I mean, I, I'm not sure where this personality came from because, you know, at UCLA, he seemed to be more engaged in all of the games that he's played in and everything. But I mean, I don't know. Since he's gotten to the NBA, he's kind of been a shell of himself. But, you know, uh, I think one thing he needs to do a better job of is like just attacking the basket a little bit more. You know, he kind of waits for the game to come to him. You know, last night he only shot, what, two of eight from the field, you know? Yeah. And I'd like to say I'd like to see him take initiative of the offense a little bit more. Like I said, this is a contract year for Lonzo. You know, the Pelicans, they offered you a certain amount of money. You didn't like the amount that you were offered. So you turn it down and you're going to yeah, you're putting yeah, you're agency putting, this year. Yeah. And you're putting you're putting it into your hands. You're playing you're playing for your contract, your big time contract. So you can't be scoring five points and shooting two for eight from the field like that's that's not going to get you a big contract. So and then, I, yeah, I want him to turn around and have 16 and six. So exactly. Like I want him to be more aggressive. I know he can. But um, one question I want to ask you, I, I bring it up. What do you think about him and Eric Bledsoe playing together? Do you think it's, they should stop doing that or continue that? Well, I mean, I I really don't have a too much of a problem with it because it's like the who else are you gonna really pair with them? I mean, they don't have that much guard play that can really, you know what I'm saying, mesh well with Lonzo's game regardless. And this Eric Bledsoe, he is a guy that you traded for. So you're actually you're obviously gonna have to play him. But yeah. I think one thing that they need to do a better job of having Lonzo take more initiative as a playmaker, you know, totally Eric agree. Bledsoe, he's not necessarily a playmaker, but he's also not necessarily a score. He's somebody who, you know, he, I could imagine him coming off the bench, but I mean, is inserting what? Josh Gil Hart. Josh Hart. Josh Hart or Gilgis Alexander much of a step? I don't think so. So, I mean, they're just going to have to figure it out. But once again, they, Lonzo can play with anybody, where, whether it's Eric Bledsoe, Josh Hart, or Gilgis Alexander. But at the end of the day, it's all in Lonzo's hands. And he needs to take more initiative into the offense, like I said. And, you know, just be able to show that he can be your primary ball handler and be able to produce for you in pivotal moments of the game. But, I mean, like I said, like last night, he shot two of eight from the field. I mean, he's got to improve on his field goal percentages and things of that nature. You know, he can't continue to play monotone. I like to see him take more initiative of the offense, like I said. But I mean, the game last night, it wasn't like necessarily entirely terrible. You know, he kind of started the game pretty well. Uh, he got his teammates open shots off on the perimeter early. Uh, he defended pretty well, and they were actually able to hold the Hornets to 20 points while they put up 38 points in the first quarter. So it's not like, you know what I'm saying, he came out there and laid an egg from the jump, but yeah. Just think, throughout the course of the game, when they like throughout the course of the game, when the Hornets start coming back and th when they needed a spark, Lonzo was not helpful. Right. And I think, I think one way that he could help the Pelicans is pushing the ball in transition a little bit more. That's his, that's his bread and butter. Yeah, run, run with, run with, Lon I mean, run with uh, Williamson on the, on the fast break, like get it out, get push it out, push the ball up ahead and get, get, get easy transition points to spark, spark yourself on offense. Right. Because he's a much better player in transition than he is in a half court set. Not saying that he's a bad player in a half court set to begin with, but you know, like I said, transition, getting out and running, it, it's going to open up the floor for, Brandon Ingram, Zion Williamson, it allows everybody, you know what I'm saying, get a better feel for the game. <clears throat> but I think I think the Pelicans, they're way better when Lonzo plays at a high level, like I said. So he's going to have to do what he does best. And obviously, he needs to drive the ball a little bit more, you know, when they're playing in the half court set and try to finish above the rim. Uh, like you say, like you stated earlier, he he kind of turns down a lot of open looks at the rim. I'd like to see that change. And that's something that he said he he was going to improve on this offseason. But I think adding a mid-range off like pick and rolls, I think that would help his production as well, rather than just like relying on the three ball so much. We we know that you can shoot the three ball pretty well, but I think if he's as if he can showcase that he can be as versatile as possible, that'll be really beneficial to New Orleans and Lonzo Ball. So 
that's that. But I mean, switching over to Lamelo for this last point, I love him and Miles Bridges together. The chemistry that they have together is very like these first nine games. The chemistry that they have together is very, very good. Like, like he's Miles Bridges is really showing that he's a great piece of this team. And him and Lamelo playing together, I love it. They get up, they get up and down the corner transition. Lamelo finds him in the corner. Miles knocks it down. Like I love it. I love what Lamelo is doing with that team. And my question to you is: Should he start over Devontae Graham? Because I'm hearing that like they won't put Lamelo, uh, they won't start Lamelo because it might hurt Devontae Graham's uh, confidence coming off the season that he had last year. So what do you think? I mean, if Lamelo continues to play at a high level, they certainly have to consider it. But I mean, like like you said, I mean, he he seemed to have an effect from the jump. You know, he got into the lane a lot, uh, made a made a lot of tough layups, uh, acrobatic shots and everything. He even got to the free throw line a few times. You know, he drew a few fouls, but he made his presence felt. But I think I think if like I said, if LaMelo can showcase that he can continue to make his teammates better and also be able to knock down three balls well and just be able to penetrate into the lane and, you know what I'm saying, create shots for not only himself, but his teammates, he most certainly needs to. But I mean, I also kind of think too, like, okay, let's say that they do put LaMelo in the starting lineup. I mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think that he will have any problem meshing well with that rotation because they, they actually put him in the starting lineup rotation uh, last night a few times. But my thing is, how will Devontae Graham play with that second unit? Exactly. Will he have that same chemistry that Lamelo has with Miles Bridges? I mean, we don't. And know. I don't. And I'm. I'm not necessarily worried about chemistry because those are all guys that they've played with each other before. But yeah, I just feel like yes, not only will his confidence necessarily take a hit, but how how much productive can Graham be with less minutes? You know what I mean? Like yeah, he's, I totally he normally he normally averages around like 30 to 36 minutes a game. So if you cut down his production, is he gonna get worse or is he gonna improve? That's my only thing. Yeah, I totally agree. But I mean, like I said, if Melo keeps shooting the ball well, he'll he'll get the starting lineup role in no time. I think I think him pairing with Terry Rozier, Gordon Hayward, uh, Bismack Bayambo, and PJ Washington, that's a that's that's a pretty good that's a decent lineup. They could be top they could possibly be between, you know, a top twenty offense in the NBA, which I, I don't know if they are right now currently sitting, but they could be a lot better. But I mean it could it could also result in more wins, you know. Like I said, Melo being able to play make and, you know, saying just penetrate into the lane and be able to do Melo type things. Yeah. I think it'll be beneficial to the Charlotte Hornets' offense and possibly their defense. defense. So, yeah. So what what else do you have on Melo as far as like what he needs to do and improve on in order to you know what I'm saying be beneficial to the Charlotte Hornets offense. I think the ceiling is high for him, but I also think that just being just being patient, let the game come to you, which he does. He's very great at that, but um, don't try to force things. Sometimes he does force things. Like you said, he overpasses, and sometimes when he drives, he might he's trying to make, he tries to do too much when he could just take the easy basket. So just let the game come to you. But I think Lamelo's Lamelo's playing very good right now. I don't really have too many negatives. But one thing I do would want to see is get them uh, on the defense. Um, He's creating a lot of turnovers, but I want to see um, them get in transition more because, like I said, the balls are really known for getting out fast pace, getting out on transition. So I would love and the Hornets have the players to do that, too. So I would love to see them get out in transition to help them, you know, spark their offense. Right. I agree 100 percent. But as far as the rest of the episode, I think that's all that we have for you guys today. Uh, we really appreciate you guys tuning in to another episode. It's now episode 21. Um before you leave, make sure you like and subscribe, turn on post notifications, say something to us in the comment section. If you have any things that you need to say to us, whether we're, you know what I'm saying, you disagreed or agree with one of our comments, let us know. But outside of that, it's your boy, Nicey Chunga Benny. I'm here with my co-host, Greg King, and we out. We out.